Welcome to another Digital Adventures Let's Build. Today, I'm going to be making a mini game that is from the very popular uh, video game iPhone app called Among Us. In this game, you're a part of a crew and you're supposed to complete tasks, but just wait a minute. There is an imposter who's trying to sabotage you as you are completing your tasks, trying to get people kicked off the ship, uh, try to eliminate them, and you know, do crazy stuff. So, the minigame we are going to recreate in Scratch today is called Calibrate Distributor, uh, and it can be found in the electrical room. Um, and in this game, you have three spinning dials or something like that. I don't know how to describe these exactly. Rings, rings with little knobs, and when the knob reaches this right here, this little uh, other thing, this electrical device, uh, you are supposed to click this button here, and it will light up yellow. Once that is complete, you go to the next one, wait for it to line up, click it, and so forth. If you miss one, it all gets reset and you have to start over. So that's the hard part about it. You have to be accurate all three times. Um, so let's get started. First thing, obviously, we need to design the sprites. So I'm going to destroy the cat. We're going to come over here into the paintbrush. The very first important one is going to be a circle with uh, an outline. And I'm going to go ahead and make this the blue one, adjusting the color of the outline. And the, the fill, I'm gonna just use, uh, let's use like that gray color, gray. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do, make sure that the circle's in the middle, and then we're gonna add a little knob as well. And we're gonna have it stick out quite a bit and it's facing to the right. So this way, when it spins, it will, that's pretty close, but not perfect. Need this in the exact middle. Huh. That's in the exact middle. Good. Great. Uh, let's call this just blue spin. The sprite's been made. Go into our code. Now let's just go ahead and um, make this thing spin around. See how it looks. Then move on to the next step. One green plate clicked. Um, forever. Sure. It's going to pretty much forever spin, although we will force it to not spin at some point. So we'll, we'll just keep it like this for now. Uh, motion, turn, and I think six degrees is a good speed. Press the green flag, and there we go. First step complete. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I want to create the sprite that it needs to t um, line up with for it to activate the light. So I need to make that right now. What I'm also going to do is have another costume here. I'll duplicate it, right click, duplicate. Click on this one and when it's off, it will be black. And then when the costume is on, or activated, I will make it uh, light up blue using that little color picker tool. Perfect. Uh, and then we'll call this the light. So it's the blue spin, and oh, I should call it blue light. Blue light. I'll put spaces in between these. Okay, excellent. So now I just need to line this up. I'm gonna put it as close as I can without touching it. So that way it'll only touch it when that spin occurs. Or when it you know, lines up. Now how do we know when it's lined up? Well, we can use a touching, um, touching sensing block. But before I do that, I'm gonna set up something. I'm gonna set up a variable. Now this variable is going to hold information for me. I'm gonna delete this first one, delete that variable. We're gonna make another one called blue, um, 
blue lined up or something like that. Blue lined up for all sprites is fine. And what this is going to do for me is I'm going to make it switch to one whenever these are touching, which means that they're lined up and we can, you know, turn on the light by pressing the button. So let's do that. So there's two things that can occur. So I'm going to need if else, if it's lined up or touching, I'm going to tell the game that blue is lined up. Otherwise we say it's not lined up. So if inside sensing, touching, blue light. So if the blue spin guy that I'm in right now touches blue light, we go ahead and set blue lined up to one, which means true or yes, of course it is lined up and then otherwise it's zero. Now when I play my game, let's go full screen, you can see zero, 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 and it'll turn to one as long as it's touching it. So we're gonna move on from there. What happens when we uh, press the button. Well, we don't have a button yet, so we need to make one of those as well. This one is going to be simple. Just going to be a square. I'll fill it in with gray. And to be fancy, I'm going to make another little square underneath it. And this way, what I can do is this will be costume called up so when the button is up and I'll duplicate it and I'll delete it or I'll move it down and delete that one and call this down Oops, down now what I can do is make it look like it's being pressed up and down kind of can see it um, so that way it'll look good when you click it that button's huge, so we're going to shrink that. Let's go 50% uh, size here. Good. Okay. Now we have a button. I must call it blue button. Because we will eventually have three of these. Okay. Next step is... We need to click the button. So... To make a clicking button script, um, we could do two ways. We can use this when sprite clicked but, uh, event here. I don't usually like using that one because it sort of creates a new a thread of code, so it activates the green flag. So what I'm going to do instead is use a when green flag clicked forever. And then we're going to say if else. So I like if else because it can either be pressed, which will do the stuff like this, or it's not being pressed, which is the bottom part. If it's touching the mouse pointer and mouse is down, I'm going to combine these two inside my if statement. So it has to complete those, or it has to uh, recognize those things occurring to run the code in here. Touching mouse pointer. If mouse down, oh no, where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Phew. Um, let's make that smaller so we can see our code. Great, if our mouse is being clicked down, which means click, and it's touching our mouse pointer, then that that's like clicking something, right? Let's go ahead and switch the costume to down, and let's test it out, why not? Oh no, something's not working. Oh, it's not coming back up. Well, let's duplicate that and switch it to up. Oh, ha, <laughs> foolish me. I said or, you can't do or. That means if it's doing this or that, I need to do and. I think I said and, but grabbed the or block. Terrible, terrible mistake. Okay, now we have, now we have a button here doesn't do anything it just goes up and down which is fine we are going to tell the rest of the game um, or we're gonna check to see if it's touching this and if it is we're gonna tell the whole game with a broadcast that we should light up this light and the way we need to do that is first checking is blue lined up is blue lined up 
All right, well, when we click it and it goes down, we can do a check of if else. So if blue line up is equal to what? We're gonna say equal to one because that's true. So when blue lined up is true, excellent. We need to tell the game with some broadcasts that we have successfully activated blue. We're gonna say blue activated. Great job. Now, if we mess up, we have to reset all of it. So we're just gonna go and create a broadcast right here called reset. Now these broadcasts don't do anything yet. They just tell all the other sprites that blue activated or to reset. They don't know what that means yet. Well, this guy here, when he is activated, well, first of all, when he starts, oops, <laughs> when he starts the game, he needs to set his costume, switch to costume off. He is supposed to be off. There we go. However, when he receives blue activated, we will switch his costume on. Perfect. Now I can just cheat and keep clicking or click as many times as I want until it lines up. It's not what I want. I need to also reset this light. So when I receive blue, or sorry, when I receive reset, oh no, I don't want to comment. Get out of here. Oh, everything's going terrible. Okay, got it. We turn it back off. When I receive reset, turn it back off. So now you can see if I mess up, it resets. Perfect. This one doesn't reset yet, which can cause problems if you can hold it down. See? So, this uh, blue, let's reset it when it is incorrectly pressed. So, when I receive reset, we are going to set, well, let's just point in direction some different way, like over here. So every time I click and it doesn't work, it resets. Otherwise it does that. Now one problem is it keeps spinning. I want it to stop spinning once it's activated. Now that's not too hard. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can do that for us. Um, When it's activated, we want it to stop moving. But there's already something spinning it. So we can kind of override that by saying, when I receive blue activated, forever, no wait, wrong. Repeat until. So it is going to spin, or it's gonna stop spinning until blue is no longer lined up. To say that blue, to check and see if blue is not lined up, we can say blue lined up equals zero, which means false. Because remember, when it's not lined up, it will be zero. Okay. To make sure it always stays pointed to the right, we can go to motion and say point in direction 90. Okay, let's see if it works. Perfect. First try, no mistakes. Flawless victory, okay. Now what happens if I make a mistake? It resets. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna need to do, this all works so far, right? Um, but I need two more. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to duplicate these sprites and rename them. And then we will talk about how to change their code so it works for um, three of these um, button activators. Okay. I have duplicated 
all three of these, the blue light, the blue spin, the blue button, for orange and red. Now, since I duplicated them, they will all have the same code, which isn't really great. It's gonna look really weird. Yeah, that's all messed up now. So I need to change the code so they match the correct uh, colors. What I'll also need to do is create variables for orange lined up and red lined up. And I'll do that first. So I can make a variable called red line up for all sprites. And lastly, orange line up. Okay, well, I'll move them out of the way a little bit. We can remove these later by clicking the check marks. I'll have them shown for now. Okay, let's go to the orange spin first. Orange spin, everything looks good, except we have a bunch of the words blue. Now we're just gonna go through, and since it's based on color, we can just click on that and switch it from blue light to orange light. Instead of blue lined up, we'll do orange lined up. And we're gonna do this throughout our code and see how it goes. Uh, blue lined up can be switched out with orange lined up. And blue activated will actually need a new message called orange activated. And that should make a new message that we can use later. Okay, that one looks good. Moving on to orange light. Uh, when I receive blue activated, that is wrong. It needs to be orange activated. Going, uh, moving on to this button. That one seems to be good. I'll zoom in for you. Orange button. Uh, let's change this one up. Mm, that looks good down. Oh, blue lined up should be orange lined up. And instead of blue activating, orange needs to activate. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> it's a little messed up. What happened to this orange uh, orange light? Oh, I didn't do this one. Whoops. That one needs to be switched back to orange. Sometimes, you know, make mistakes. It happens. I think I might have messed that up on uh, this one too. That's okay. Switch it real quick. Switch those. Okay, now back to the orange button code. Orange lined up, activate orange light. Perfect. Moving on to, hey, that's still messed up. Moving on to the last one, after I fix this one, of course. After I fix this. Moving on to red. Red's gonna need the same, uh, the same treatment. We're going to go here and see, okay, blue light's not good, we need red light. Blue lined up, wrong, red lined up. Blue activated, absolutely not. Red activated, that's the one we need. Red activated. And nope, we need red lined up. Okay, moving on to the light. Instead of blue activated, I already made it. Red activated, very good. Red button has some issues. Change the blues out with the reds. And there we go. So now, without further ado, I will be showing you the most perfect replication of the Among Us task. I forgot the name. Calibrate Distrib Distributor. Calibrate Distributor. for one. I messed up. Okay, we have an issue. I think the issue is that it needs to be moved over a little bit. Everything else looks okay. Let's try this again. One, two, three. Excellent. Green flag will reset it. If I make a mistake, it will also reset them. Say I got two in a row, I was on fire, and I missed one, it will reset. Okay, there you go. That's how you create the, uh, the Calibrate Distributor mini game from Among Us in Scratch. All right, good work team. Um, until next time, that was a Let's Build with me, Jim, from Digital Adventures. Uh, thanks for joining, and of course, I'll see you next time. If you have any game suggestions, please let me know. I will try to make it. Goodbye.